MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Let's talk about what Orlando wants to talk about. I know for sure being the UFC guy and what Ryan Thomas, Mr. Thomas Tate, came on the podcast to talk about. And that is UFC 10 is right in your backyard, Ryan. Yes, it is. And I've waited. When I say I've waited my whole life, I haven't waited my whole life. I've waited since the days in you know, the mid-90s when I started watching it, when I was way too young to be watching it. I thought the day that this phenomenon, which it is a phenomenon now, the day that it comes to Buffalo, I will buy tickets as soon as they are for sale. I did. I will be there Saturday. I'll be there Friday for the wins. I'll be there tomorrow for the open workouts. I can't wait. Um, it's a great card. Uh, very excited to say the least. So what are, what, just, you, are you planning on writing any stuff, having any live podcast or, or you know, what is your plan? Well, my plan is uh, definitely to try and get, you know, get in the media room as far as uh, Thursday uh, goes when the post workouts happen. Um, there's a few fighters that I'd like to talk to that are kind of on the undercard, the longtime veterans of the sport, like, Diago Alves and uh, Patrick Cote. Alves fought George St. Pierre back at UFC 100. This is UFC 210. He's a true veteran of the game. Um, and then you have Patrick Cote. He fought Anderson Silva you know, back when Silva had just won the middleweight title. He was middleweight reign. So uh, just starting his middleweight reign, I should say. So I, I want to talk to those guys specifically. Those are the true veterans that have seen the sport come from the dog days to where it is now. And those are the guys that I really uh, enjoy talking to. Uh, also, you know, the University of Buffalo uh, former wrestler Des Green will be fighting in his uh, first UFC fight on the undercard of that of that card. So, what better way to get your career started off in the UFC than fighting in your backyard? That's pretty awesome. I look forward to talking to him as well. No doubt, Des Green uh, will be taking on Josh Emmett, the light heavyweight in the um, preliminaries. So. I mean, like, like we said before, I don't really keep up with UFC fight game as much as some of the bigger fights I do, of course. And the, this card does actually have one of those bigger fights that stands out to me is DC Daniel Cormier talk, uh, taking on Anthony Johnson. Um, so uh, Daniel Cormier has one loss on his resume. Uh, I believe it was to John Jones. Um, so, but I'm looking at just the... Um, the, the tail of the tape here, uh, Anthony Johnson's going to whoop Daniel Cormier, isn't he? Well, let's not go that far just yet. You know, I, I know these guys, you know, the, the careers that they've had. I know, you know, the, the best ones of their career. I know their best moments. I know their worst moments. And Daniel Cormier has had only one bad moment, and that was against arguably one of the greatest fighters of all time. That was John Jones. And then you have Anthony Johnson, who went from a welterweight to a middleweight to a light heavyweight, to a heavyweight, and then back down to a light heavyweight. So for a guy that has had the odyssey that he has had in his career to be where he is today, it's it's pretty remarkable. And, uh, you know, you definitely know the strengths and weaknesses heading into this fight. Johnson has to finish it within the first, you know, two minutes or so. Uh, Which he almost did the first time, right? Yes, as he almost did the first time. That was the hardest uh, hit that Daniel Cormier has ever been uh, the, the hardest punch that he has ever had to take was obviously against Anthony Johnson from the open this, this dude, Anthony Johnson is ripped, chiseled, stacked. He is a beast and has what, a good three inches or so on uh, DC. And when you're looking at his career, what's really remarkable is he has 22 victories in the sport of MMA, 16 of which are knockout victories. We could be very well talking about not just one of the best light heavyweights in the world, we could be talking about, in MMA, one of the greatest knockout artists that the sport has ever seen. So I think that gets lost on a lot of people. For him to go from welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, to have the success that he's always had, uh, it's it's no fluke. He has one shot that can put anyone away, whether it's his left or right hand. Most oftentimes it's his right. Uh, and he's got great uh, kickboxing as well. He's finished fights via head kick on several occasions. So. He's a multifaceted guy. His weakness is Cormier's strength. If Cormier can take him down like he did in the first fight, it'll be the same, virtually the same scenario than it was the last time. But um, I trust that Johnson has hopefully worked on the obvious, his takedown defense, 
and uh, will look a lot better heading into this rematch, win or lose. You mentioned the progressive weight classes for Anthony Johnson, man. man dudes on them protein shakes or something. You know, yeah. it's, it's been incredible because dude is absolutely chiseled now. So, But you're right. If it does come, come down to any kind of ground game, I would say DC has the advantage. So, uh, But you're looking forward to that just that heavy or the light heavyweight championship bout. Who do you got? Um, I'm looking forward to a lot of fights on the card. But, I, you know, if I were to make a pick, this morning I thought Daniel Cormier, but when I was looking at all the the career the career of Anthony Johnson, I mean the pressure is really on Daniel Cormier. If you look at the fight within the fight, uh, he has to win this fight in order to avenge his loss to John Jones. John Jones is waiting in the wings. He's going to be at the event. He'll be octagon side. He's having an after party in Buffalo, uh, which I plan on attending just to see if I can get a glimpse of the guy. Um, if I know anything about John Jones, uh, that's a party right there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully he stays, he, he keeps it clean and stays out of trouble. Um, I was actually surprised that the UFC was letting him have an after party. I thought, should this guy be having an after party? Should he be allowed? Should he have a curfew? He ain't even on the card. I mean, what the hell is he even doing in Buffalo? Yeah. He might be having an after party if Daniel Cormier loses or if Cormier wins and he gets the chance to redeem himself. You know, UFC 200, that was such an epic fallout, a huge disappointment. And uh, I would love to see that fight again, but Cormier has to beat Anthony Johnson again in order for that to happen. So, but what are you saying? <laughs> what I'm saying is I think that the pressure is on Daniel Cormier, and I've seen a lot of crazy stuff happen in this calendar year in the sport of mixed martial arts. Um, a smart man would bet Cormier, but a wise man would pick Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> Hed hedging your bets there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I pick Johnson. That's what that means. I mean, I agree with you. That's who I'm picking my limited knowledge. Uh, just looking at the tail of the tape and where these two guys are in their career and what happened the last fight, uh, I would have to agree with you. That's what I think. I think it's going to be a knockout soon. Uh, but let's go to Orlando, our other UFC fight expert. So just strictly talking about this, um, the main event between Anthony Johnson and DC Daniel Cormier. What do you got, Orlando? How do you see it playing out? Yeah, Johnson, uh, the latest round two. Uh, I, I don't think it's a it's a wise choice either. I think I think it's a smart choice. You look at his last fights, and I know Glover Teixeira is a telling of his career. Ryan Bader, well, he ran to belts for right, and uh, Jimmy Manu was pretty scary lately. So I know his last two victories over over the over his opponents might have been some of the lesser guys who who are not in their prime anymore. Ryan Bader, I mean that's questionable, but. Anthony Johnson is just a scary man. Oh. So my money's on him. Daniel Cormier, the last time we saw him in the octagon was at 200. But I mean, he basically just sat on a on a 40 year old Anderson Silva, and the crowd booed him. And nothing against that. That was the game plan because Anderson Silva landed a, uh, one of his body kicks, and that already he, Cormier already felt the power. So he had to go back to his game plan and just basically take it to the ground and sit on him. And you're not going to be able to do that against Anthony Johnson, as big as he is, as tall as he is, as muscular as he is. So um, I like Daniel Cormier a lot, but I know he's had some injury problems. And Anthony Johnson has just been on a roll knocking people out. Whatever you put in front of him, he's going to destroy you. And that's the scary part. So I think this, in the second fight, uh, Johnson walks out of there with the title. There you go. Orlando, what else are you looking forward to on this card? I'll be honest with you, there's not a lot of other things that I'm very familiar with on this card other than uh, Chris Chris Weidman and who? Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, Chris, Chris Weidman, Gigar Musasi. Uh, that has been I'll around a while. That, yeah, and no, I'll, I'll stick to that full main event. Um, I won't go too deep into it because I know we don't have a lot of time left. But um, obviously, that co main event um, sticks out a lot because. Well, uh, well, as Ryan Thomas would know, uh, wide men from that area out there in New York, and they just barely made MMA legal. So it's, if you think about it, a lot of pressure's on Chris Weidman because his last two fights came as losses. And especially, uh, uh, I think 205 was almost recently. And um, I think a lot of pressure's on him. Um, I'm going to give the edge to Musasi. I want to see Chris Weidman uh, win, especially in his, in his home state of New York. But I just, Musasi has just been on a roll. He's one of the top guys, and 
uh, Chris Weidman is going to continue to fight some of the top guys in the division. I'm pulling for Weidman. I want to see Weidman win, but I just think Saucy is just going to be a bit too much for Chris Weidman as far as well as his, his debut in his hometown. So there you go, uh, Ryan. I see uh, a woman's uh, a women's fight on the card as well. Is that going to be entertaining? Uh, Chris Weidman, as Orlando just alluded to. What else? I mean, you're going to be there in person, so I know you have a list of things that you're most excited about. So go through that list other than the main event. You have the uh, – I'm going to go with Musassi. I'm going I'm to let that be known. I'm going to go with Musassi for that co-main event. Um, but moving on, you know, the next fight that I'm really looking forward to is um, Will Brooks versus, uh, I believe it's uh, Cowboy Oliveira. Uh, Will Brooks was a former Bellator lightweight champ. Um, he's, you know, had some bumps and bruises in the UFC, trying to find his, his footing in the UFC. But anytime you get to watch a former champion in any organization, uh, I'm excited for that. And as I alluded to earlier, you know, Tiago Alves versus Patrick Cote. Uh, that is a completely different contrast in styles where Alms is the pit bull, he's the aggressive striker. Patrick Cote is kind of the, I'll point you, try to finish you if he can, but he, he's got his own unique style out of that. Um, try to start gym, he used to train with GSP, still does now that GSP is back. So I'm very excited to see what Cote comes with as well as Tiago Alms. I know you got to be excited about that. So you're telling me it's the first UFC event in the Buffalo area. Uh, UFC 7 was the last UFC event in Buffalo. So if, uh, if that doesn't tell you a story, uh, that was in 1995 where Ken Shamrock was the main event. <laughs> Shamrock is still fighting, which he should not be fighting. He should retire and get a commentary gig. Do whatever you got to do, but please stop fighting. He's too old. I respect the guy, but it's time to hang it up. No, he may have fought too long now that he can't get a commentary gig. <laughs> you know, he you know, he may not be right in the head. Maybe that's why he is fighting. So, I don't know. But yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Completely agree there, man. But thanks for the UFC talk and joining us on the podcast. Um I really appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt, man. And uh, thanks for the baseball knowledge too. For the full podcast, check us out on MyFantasySportsTalk.com, YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud.